The main positive uh, dimension of the current push to realise a nuclear weapons free world, and there have been others emanating from the States immediately after the Cold War and in the mid 1990s, which faded away. The difference here is the bipartisan support and the sense after the attacks of September the 11th that the ability of the United States and its largely Western allies to control the nuclear weapons world is now under question. And there seems to be an acceptance which was lacking before that it is seriously in the US national interest to halt and roll back the proliferation of nuclear weapons, control the spread of fissile materials that could fall into the hands of terrorist groups, and that actions undertaken by the US administration in terms of what it does with its own nuclear weapons are key to that process. That connection has, seems to have been made those arguments have clearly been made before, but their acceptance as perhaps a mainstream understanding in the American political elite is, the, is what's new about this. What's interesting about the British government's policy on nuclear weapons is that it's trying to ride two horses at once, pushing forward the progressive nuclear disarmament agenda while sticking to the argument that Britain must keep nuclear weapons for its security. The problem with those arguments are twofold. First of all, it legitimises the indefinite possession of nuclear weapons by any country who shares that sense of long-term insecurity. There's nothing particular about the UK that means we deserve to have them, and a country like, say, Iran does not. The second issue is that nuclear weapons do not provide an insurance. Possessing nuclear weapons won't give us some compensation if our vital interests are attacked. We're not going to get any reimbursement in the common understanding of insurance. What they do give us is an assurance that we can wreak revenge upon some aggressing party in the future and because we think we can have this assurance of revenge it means Russia or Iran or a nuclear armed Al-Qaeda or whoever will decide not to attack us but that's logic from the Cold War that's logic from what I think is genuinely a bygone era other theorists other academics other policymakers disagree they think that if you remove nuclear weapons from relations between states, it will make the world safe for all-out conventional war. The difference today is that we live in a truly complex, interdependent, globalised world at all levels of state power, political, military, social, economic. The major powers, the nuclear armed states, are, are, are major trading partners and look set to remain that way. And threats that we're going to face are going to be global in nature. They're not going to be coming from states. They're going to be coming from a whole range of different dynamics. So the justifications for the United Kingdom staying in the nuclear game are incredibly weak. They're much more to do with uh, being seen to be a major pivotal power in world politics. They're seen to be maintaining a very close relationship with the United States and an unwillingness to leave France as the only nuclear power in Europe, which has nothing to do with calculations of strategic threat. These are issues to do with identity and how the British political elite sees itself and the role that our continued possession of nuclear weapons plays in that. And it's going to take a courageous decision, courageous political decision by probably not Gordon Brown, perhaps David Cameron, perhaps whoever comes next, to say that, look, our role in the world, our sense of leadership in the world, the way we define that, no longer requires us to be a nuclear weapon state.